Glazerit in action. 21 line special techniques. Part repairs and blending. Take a look around any British car park at the host of different colours on display. This tremendous range of vehicle colours has, for a variety of reasons, caused many problems in refinish workshops. Twenty-one line from Glazerit. The versatile, long-lasting two-pack system answers these problems. Glazerit have developed several refinish systems for twenty-one line which suit all types of repairs and workshop conditions. This video will demonstrate two blending techniques for repairing minor damage on a recent model Ford Escort. If left untouched, severe paint chipping will cause unsightly corrosion blisters within a very short time. On the bonnet of this Escort, there is also a deep scratch and a small dent that requires filling. Glazerit 21 line literature package clearly describes each repair stage shown in this program. First, the scratched and flaking paintwork is well sanded using a random orbital sander in preparation for the polyester stopper. Glassid polyester fine stopper is used to fill both the indentations and the feathered edge. Polyester stoppers and fillers may be applied to most well sanded original finishes and well cured refinish materials. The deep chips on the tailgate are blocked flat with P360 grit wet and dry. fine flatted with P600 to remove the coarser scratches. This blending technique will require preparation of the full tailgate. For surface preparation of the existing paintwork, fine paper such as P800 or 1000 should be used. Narrow window frames are an ideal place to finish this fade-out system. Masking paper keeps the bumper and rear panels clean. A P180 sanding disc is used here to level and smooth the fine stopper. This operation may be carried out using wet and dry. However, polyesters are very absorbent. If wet sanded, they must be dried off thoroughly. Schleifix flatting paste is used here in conjunction with an ultra-fine Scotch-Brite pad for perfect preparation prior to the localised blending. Schleifix is a fine abrasive paste which keys the original paintwork for the repair materials. After washing and thoroughly drying the blend areas, the vehicle is ready for masking. Roll masking, as shown here, is an extremely useful method for preventing hard edges of overspray. Air pressure builds up inside the rolled edge which prevents a heavy deposit of paint being applied to the panel surface. Full masking is then carried out ready for primer application. For 21 line, there is a wide choice of compatible primers and surfaces. In this instance, we have chosen Glassofix 1502 stroke 9. This etch primer is activated one to one with a phosphoric acid solution and provides excellent adhesion and corrosion resistance. Before primer application, 
All traces of wax and traffic film must be removed thoroughly. The bonnet and tailgate are cleaned using wax and grease remover 541-5, then thoroughly dried. Sufficient primer is applied to ensure a film build of at least one thousandth of an inch, or 25 microns. All two-pack paints should be applied in wet coats for maximum adhesion. Then, after air or force drying, they can be wet flatted with P600 wet and dry paper. The procedure shown here for the tailgate is also used on the bonnet repair area. The bonnet and tailgate are flatted. Then it is washed with clean water. then leathered and allowed to dry. A tack rag used on the blend areas removes all traces of dust and scum. All the blending methods for Glazerit 21 line are fully described in the literature set. There is a wide choice of hardeners available to adapt 21 line for all sizes of repair and all types of paint shop conditions. The hardener used for this demonstration has been chosen for its speed of cure in low stoving conditions. Nine 929-71MS hardener is added to the 21 line colour in the ratio of 2 to 1. Then thinned with a fast thinner 352-50 using the green 2 to 1 scale mixing stick. A feature of MS or medium solid hardeners is that they add build to the 21 line colour. Using this range of hardeners only two wet coats of 21 line colour need be applied. The first coat is applied to the bonnet and the tailgate areas to obtain partial obliteration of the primer. After a few minutes flash off, the second coat may be applied, making sure of complete colour obliteration of the repaired area. The second coat is then applied to the tailgate. The technique of blending the edge of this spray area is fully described in the literature as method one. The mixed colour is further thinned one to one and applied to the overspray area. The masking is removed and the outer edges are further dissolved using either neat slow thinner or further thinned out colour. For the tailgate, a different technique is used. This is described in Glazerit's literature as method two. For larger areas of blending, a coat of activated polyurethane clear lacquer is applied to the entire panel. Note, the sprayer takes care not to overload the areas previously painted. After a short flash-off time, to allow the solvents to disperse, 
a second coat of lacquer is applied. Lacquering around the entire panel absorbs all the overspray from the repaired area. The advantages of this blending technique are twofold. It eliminates the need for exact colour matching with time-consuming tinting and requires only minimal polishing. A light wash of neat thinner dissolves the lacquer overspray on the pillars, reducing polishing time. When fully baked and cooled, the blend areas may be polished. We now move on to the next stage, which is polishing. Ammonia-free polish must be used. Fresh polyurethane paint systems are susceptible to severe staining by ammonia. Therefore, compounds, polishes and cutting liquids containing ammonia should be completely avoided. Glazurit recommend their fine polishing compound with their universal liquid polish, giving a final luster. 21 line, when fully cured, may be flatted for a superior high gloss appearance. Dirt or dust nibs may be removed by light sanding with P1200 wet and dry paper prior to polishing. Glazurid have developed these products and techniques to enable the refinisher to produce perfect part repairs and blendings, like this, every time. In addition to the systems demonstrated, Glazurid's literature also describes procedures for two-tone and multicolour paintwork, reducing gloss and the application of metallic finishes. There are also systems for painting all types of plastics. We have now shown you Glazurid in action with 21 lines for part repairs and blendings. Glazurit's 21 line, the versatile two-pack system for a lasting finish. Glazurit in action. 54 line special techniques, part repairs and blendings. Many of the predictions about the growing popularity of metallic finishes can be seen to have come true. In the search for individuality in today's mass-produced market, the motoring public is demanding more attractive and exotic finishes. Looking around any car park, it can be seen that base coat and clear metallic finishes fulfill this demand. Glazurit's Glasomax 54-line base coat metallic is Europe's leading metallic vehicle finish. 54-line is used by virtually every European car manufacturer for online painting and warranty refinishing. There has always been the misconception that base coat and clear finishes create difficulties for the refinish painter. However, 54-line base coat and clear lacquer systems are designed to be versatile and straightforward, whether tackling complete resprays, part repairs or minor blendings, as this program will demonstrate.
The repair methods to be demonstrated for this type of typical damage are fully described in Glazerit's 54 line literature. Firstly, a P180 grade sanding disc is used to feather edge cracked and flaking paintwork. An ideal choice of primer filler for this type of repair is Glassofix Etch Primer 1502 stroke 9. Mixed one part primer to one part phosphoric acid solution, this gives excellent adhesion to the bare metal, good build and high corrosion resistance. Road film and traces of wax have been removed. Filling and flatting of the repaired areas has been carried out before the primer is applied, a wipe with a tack rag ensures that no dust is present. A light but wet coat of etch primer is applied to both repairs. After a few minutes flash off time, the second coat and any subsequent coats are sprayed to ensure sufficient build. Drying times for this primer can be as short as 15 minutes in low stoving conditions. After drying and guide coating, the repairs are block flatted. Schleifix flatting paste is the perfect preparation for blending work. Schleifix is a fine abrasive paste that keys the original paintwork for the repair materials. Due to the position of the repairs, it is advisable to prepare the adjoining panels. This ensures a sufficient area for a perfect colour fade-out. After washing off with clean water and drying, masking can be carried out. Comprehensive information guides on thinning and application details are contained in Glazerit's 54-line literature. Glasomax 54-line is available in a wide range of over 500 stock colours. Alternatively, over 1,300 colours and variants can be produced using Glazerit's 54-line mixing scheme. By careful selection of thinners, 54 line may be adapted in drying times to suit any size of repair. In this instance, extra fast thinner has been chosen, adjusting the viscosity to between 15 and 17 seconds, using a DIN 4 mm viscosity cup at ambient temperature. The ready mast vehicle is in the booth where it is being de-waxed prior to being cleaned with a tack rag. Before applying the base coat colour, a thin coat of wet clear lacquer is applied over the areas surrounding the flatted primer. For this operation, a small amount of activated polyurethane clear lacquer is thinned in the ratio of one part lacquer to nine parts thinner. This thin coat absorbs any base coat overspray, thus preventing a halo effect or ringing forming around the repair. Here we see the first colour coat being applied. With the chosen fast thinner, the base coat flash off time is very short. Normally, full opacity is achieved with two further coats of 54 line colour. It is important that 54 line should be applied wet to avoid patchiness and possible adhesion failures. From Glazerit's range of finishing lacquers, 
we have chosen Glacider 92382 MS Clear Lacquer. Using the graduated mixing stick, the lacquer is activated with MS Hardener 92973, then thinned 20 to 25 percent with the appropriate thinner for the area to be painted. Having allowed the 54 line base coat to flash off completely, the first coat of lacquer may be applied. Glacida clear lacquer is chosen for its exceptional high build. This feature, combined with the build property of MS Hardener, produces a superior high-gloss wet-look finish in only two spray applications of lacquer. Flash-off time with this material is dependent upon the temperature within the booth and the chosen speed of the thinner. Touching the masking tape or paper is a good reliable method for testing flash off. When satisfied that the first coat is sufficiently tacky, the sprayer applies the second and final lacquer coat to the complete area. This lacquer and hardener combination offers the sprayer a great degree of control and enables him to create the desired flow and gloss levels. In order to reduce polishing times on the blending areas around the roof and door pillars, the finishing lacquer is discarded, neat, slow thinner is carefully washed over these areas to absorb the clear lacquer overspray and melt it into the previously prepared surface. With the repair and paintwork finished, the completed vehicle is dried, demasked and rolled out of the booth. All that remains to do is a light polish of the blend areas. More of that in a few moments. It may not be necessary or desirable to completely over lacquer the adjoining panels when tackling a minor repair, such as this typical rear wheel arch damage. For this repair, we will demonstrate a localised blending technique. The blend area is prepared with Schleifix flatting paste. is washed clean to remove flatting scum. Dewaxed, masked and tack ragged ready for the blending. The Glazerit 54 line literature sets contain good accurate application details for blending techniques. The method selected is usually determined by the size or area of the repair. The ideal method for small localised areas is outlined in the literature under method 3. Each step-by-step -step operation is clearly described. By following this technique closely and with a little practice, perfect blends may be carried out successfully every time. Firstly, the thin coat of lacquer is sprayed onto the area immediately surrounding the repair. After a few moments flash off, 
the 54 line base coat colour is applied. Further coats of 54 line are sprayed over the repair until the primer is completely obliterated. One of the Glacida 923 line clear lacquers is chosen, mixed with Hardener 929, then thinned and applied according to the data sheet. The solvents quickly evaporate, and as soon as the surface is tacky, a second coat of lacquer is applied. The finishing lacquer is substituted with a slow thinner suitable for blending. The thinner is washed carefully over the lacquer overspray, dissolving and blending it into the car's original surface finish. The blended paintwork is now finished, and when dry requires only a small amount of polishing to complete the invisible repair. Always use ammonia-free compounds and polish on fresh polyurethane finishes. Ammonia has the effect of staining and bleaching, which would of course completely ruin the new paintwork. Glazurit's water-based ammonia-free polishing compound finishes off the blend. Further polishing with universal liquid polish may be carried out to produce a superior high gloss. As demonstrated here, you can see how, with a little practice, this technique consistently produces a highly effective blend. However, even in the cleanest of paint shops, dirt may still find its way into the new paint film. Fortunately, Glazurit's 923-lined polyurethane lacquers are flattable when fully cured. A novel but very effective way to remove dust nibs and small runs is to use a small length of dressed body file which planes away the dirt nib. After a light flat with a very fine P1200 wet and dry, the surface may be completely polished back to a high gloss. This demonstration clearly illustrates the simplicity of Glazurit's 54-line repair techniques. It's not surprising, therefore, to know that this base coat metallic vehicle painting system has become a favourite with vehicle manufacturers and refinishers throughout Europe. Glazomax 54-line, Europe's leading base coat metallic.
Glasurit in action. Universal Plastic System UPS. More and more plastic components are being used in vehicle construction. Fuel economy brought about by weight saving, better styling properties, corrosion resistance, flexibility and the resistance to minor knocks and dents are just a few of the advantages that plastic offers over more traditional materials. This program demonstrates Glazerit's UPS, Universal Plastics Painting System, for reliable painting of plastic vehicle components. This escort grill and a variety of other types of plastic will be painted in this program using UPS. Full application details and a complete guide to preparation is given in the UPS literature. One of the most important factors in successful painting of any plastic is the initial cleaning of the surface. Moulding release agents and surface grease may lead to complete adhesion failures, like this. Thorough degreasing is therefore essential using the strongest recommended solvent. Nitrocellulose thinner is used first of all to establish the solvent sensitivity of the plastic. We recommend that this check is carried out on the reverse side of the component. Even after half a minute, this type of plastic shows no visible reaction to the solvent. Nor does the plastic become sticky when the solvent is rubbed into the surface. So a strong degreaser, such as Panel Cleaner 36200, should be used. Nitrocellulose Thinner 351 Stroke 1 may be used, but the panel cleaner is much more effective. This demonstration shows the first of four different car body parts being degreased. All the components to be painted are manufactured from different types of plastic to show the versatility of the Universal Plastics painting system. The degreasing operation should be carried out thoroughly until there is no doubt at all in the painter's mind that any trace of release agent or grease has been removed. Not all plastics are as solvent resistant as those previously seen. After a short rub, a nitrocellulose check will reveal that this type of plastic, similar to the Escort grill, is sensitive to solvent. 541-5 wax and grease remover should be used in this case. Stronger solvents and degreasers could in fact dissolve this type of plastic, or at the very least, make it extremely brittle. To assist adhesion and improve the surface uniformity, Further preparation should be carried out using P600 wet and dry flatting paper. However, this bumper blade has a slightly textured surface. As wet flatting would remove the texture, a Scotch-Brite pad is being used. Once wiped clean and thoroughly dried, all the components are ready for priming. These two products, 934200 Plastics Primer and 934100 Additive, are detailed in the next stage of the UPS literature. Mixing and full application details are clearly shown. Simply mix the two components in the ratio of 2 to 1. That is, two parts of 934200 Plastics Primer, 
to one part 934100 additive. These materials are manufactured from two different resins, which when combined adhere to all paintable plastic surfaces. Thorough mixing is essential to combine the resins. No thinner is necessary, as the resins when mixed are at spraying viscosity. Pouring the material through a strainer ensures thorough mixing of the plastics primer prior to application to the prepared panels. The first of two light but wet coats of primer is shown here being applied to two of the panels. The next two panels are primed in exactly the same way. A suction or gravity feed spray gun may be used. The spray gun used here is a gravity feed fitted with a 1.4mm nozzle. In normal drying conditions, such as in a spray booth, a 15 minute flash off time is sufficient to allow solvents to evaporate before applying the second of the two coats of primer. This is applied light but wet, just as the first coat. After flash off, the primer may be overcoated with colour coats. However, in the UPS system, we recommend the use of 285100 white polyurethane surfacer, which, when flatted, will improve the panel surface. Paintwork systems must be as flexible as the plastic to which they are applied, as our test clearly shows. A paint plasticizer 521111 soft face additive should be added to the surfacer. For hard, non-flexible plastics, no additive is required. For flexible plastics, soft face additive should be added to the surfacer in the ratio of 5 to 1. For extremely flexible foams, such as this spoiler, the ratio of soft face additive should be increased to 5 to 2. These components are semi-rigid, therefore no soft face additive is required. Simply mix four parts of white surfacer with one part of hardener 929-28 stroke 1. Thin with a fast thinner, for example 35250, then apply surfacer to the component until the desired build is achieved. With a new component, two spray coats will normally provide sufficient build. This bumper blade is clearly flexible.
When mixing the surfacer for this component, soft-faced additive is added to the surfacer in the ratio of five parts surfacer to one part soft face additive. This mixture is stirred thoroughly before adding hardener and thinner. By adding the plasticizer, the surfacer coating will now be as flexible as the bumper. Spoilers and other very flexible foam rubber components will, as previously demonstrated, require an increase in the amount of soft face additive necessary. The recommended ratio is five parts surfacer to two parts soft face additive. As before, this mixture is thoroughly stirred. Then the hardener and thinner are added. After flash off, the panels may receive the second and any subsequent coats of surfacer in order to achieve the desired film build. The same ratio of soft face additive as the first coat should be used for all subsequent coats. If in doubt about the flexibility of a plastic, add soft face anyway to be on the safe side. This will prolong the drying time, but no other adverse effects are produced. What we have seen so far are the simple stages of preparation for painting new components. We will now show you a repair system for a damaged plastic body section. Firstly, the badly scratched paintwork is feather edged using a random orbital sander. The component is checked for solvent sensitivity, then grease and road film are removed using the appropriate degreaser. The first of two wet coats of the adhesive primer is applied over the exposed rubber area. After approximately five minutes flash off time, a second coat of the adhesive primer may be applied. The component is checked for the level of soft face required and the white surfacer is applied to fill flatting scratches and to level out the feathered edge. Deep scratches such as these will require the use of flexible stopper 99520 with its hardener 92913. Simply take out the desired amount of stopper zero the scale then reset to add 10% to the original weight and then add hardener 92913 until the scale zero once more. The ratio 10 to 1 is accurately achieved in this way. Stir the two components together until they are well mixed and of smooth consistency.
As this demonstration shows, the material is smooth to apply and extremely flexible, even when fully cured. The stopper is applied in thin layers to the scratches. Then it is either force dried up to 60 degrees centigrade or air dried overnight. Once dry, it may be block flatted. It is possible to apply the stopper directly to the plastics primer, but by applying the stopper onto the white surfacer, there is much less chance of flatting through to bare plastic, which when exposed would require repriming. Once the flatting scum is washed off and the component is leathered and dried, a second coat of white surfacer, soft-faced as necessary, may be applied. This surfacer has rapid drying qualities and is flattable after 30 minutes at 60 degrees centigrade or alternatively one to two hours air drying depending on film build. Using P600 wet and dry, the components may be flatted ready for the application of top coats. Solid colours and base and clear metallic application details are fully covered in the UPS literature. The first two components to be top coated are semi-rigid and so require no soft face additive. Simply add the hardener and thinner to the 21 line colour as normal. Depending on the choice of hardener and thinner combinations, two to three coats of 21 line should be applied to achieve the desired gloss level, flow and build. The next component to be painted is a semi-flexible bumper blade, so soft face additive 521111 should be added to the 21 line in the ratio of five parts of colour to one part of soft face, and thoroughly stirred before adding hardener and thinner. The 54-line base coat metallic does not require any addition of soft face additive, even when used on very flexible components. The 54-line is applied in one light coat, followed after flash off by two further coats. The chosen polyurethane lacquer is mixed with soft face additive in the ratio of 5 to 2 due to the very soft, flexible nature of this foam spoiler. Ideally, temperatures should not exceed 50 degrees centigrade when force drying the plastic parts. Plastic should also be well supported to prevent distortion by the heat. This adhesion test proves the reliability of the universal plastic system. 
Half of this EPDM bumper blade has been painted without using the plastics primer. The paint system easily detaches. The same test when carried out on the area to which the universal plastic primer has been applied shows maximum adhesion. Proof of a good reliable plastic painting system cutting out the trials and the error. Glazerit UPS, the universal plastic system for all paintable plastics.